Right, so I've got this HDMI cable test which I did a mailbag not too long ago. Um, I picked it up from a surplus thing where a business has gone out of business and all this stuff's been awkward off. So I picked this up, it looked like it was brand new in the box. So I thought I'd give it a try and this cable just arrived. Nothing happens. I've got it hooked up to this cable and it's completely dead. Even if I do it manual, there's just like nothing. And I know the battery's good because it's a brand new battery. So I think I'm going to pull this thing apart and have a look and see what's actually going on with it. Because something's wrong. I start by opening it up, and there can't be much in it, surely. It must just be like a switching IC or something like that in there. There we go. It's on headers, even better. Pull these apart. And we'll see if we can find anything wrong with it. So, wire polarity is correct according to the diode at least. I don't really see anything obvious with it. It seems to be fine. I don't know. It's uh, it's interesting because it obviously just doesn't work. So it look at the side. That's looking like it's been reworked, isn't it? So that flux of stuff in there. So it looks like someone's probably tried to repair it in the past. That was pulse it. I think I put a pulse through back to the counters because what we've got here is a CD4017 which is a decay counter there's another one and another one three decay counters and a triple five timer like I said it's just counters it just counts through them and puts out an output I suppose they check for things like the triple five running voltage on a circuit stuff like that so we'll look at that shall we right nice basic test I put the battery up first thing is just to make sure we've got power going to the board in case there's an issue with the cable, there's no power there. Check that out. Battery's good. No power to the board. Let's pull this. Someone's put a yank on that wire, so it's probably pulled it off the back of one of those tabs. So let's just do a continuity test and see which one it is. That's negative. Yep. Positive. Yeah, positive wires off. Yeah, no worries. Let's cut that thing open. Yes, yeah, so I'm cutting towards my thumb. That's fine. No, I don't really care. It's in a controlled way. The wire isn't off. It is crimped. Uh huh. No connection between there and there. What's going on here? You'd think that diode would be on there, wouldn't you? Ah no, it goes up. It goes up here. Looks like it goes to that first pin there, pin 24. So let's trace it onto here. That's pin 24 here. That one? It goes around to that switch. Okay. So I'm going to have to install this board in order to check that. I thought I might have to. And then it re routes back around and comes down to those pins. So okay, we'll chuck this back in. So it's like this. The short circuit protection doesn't work in this. The whole thing is assembled and it's turned on. You have to turn it on in order to check the circuit protection, which seems a bit dodgy to me. So, alright, we'll try retry that again. And we'll check it for voltage at that diode now. Okay, now we've got voltage. Okay. I would have thought the short circuit protection would be there regardless of whether the thing's turned on or off. Mm, doesn't sound like good practice to me, anyway. So, we want voltage checks between pin 8 and 16 of those devices just to see if they've got power 9 volts so that's got power that's got power and that's got power ok so triple 5 timer uh, I'm not sure what the pin out is on this so I guess I have to just take a guess is that one? it's minus 6 volts so it could be that, I don't know those are short together so I'll be that so there's power on the board. Let's just plug it in in case something started working by me pulling it apart. Here, yeah, know. Yeah. Just nothing. Of course, I'm assuming the cable's not completely ruined, but it's a brand new cable. Maybe I'll just try another cable just to rule it out. Seeing as the chips do have power, I could check the counting. Okay, let's do that before I do anything else. So I'll plug this and what pins we want. So pin one is that top corner and we want well pretty much 
anything else. Uh, there's a clock pin. I was trying to read the diagram for the, the chip actually, so I was hoping to have it on the wall conveniently. 13 14 be clocking, okay. Well, so that's pin 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 16, 15. There must be 14 there. Okay, that's flipping back and forth, so it must be clocking. And it's high, okay. So I'll always be enabled because it is a um, an AND gate, isn't it? Inverting AND, something like that. Let's, let's try this one. And that's flipping backwards and forwards as well, periodically. It's going through a cycle, so it looks like these are actually clocking. So that means the triple five must be running because they're clocking. And um, where's the last chip? That one there. Where's pin one? Is it counting? Yes, it is. Yep, so that chip's counting. So is that one. Okay, so those chips are working. They're doing what they're supposed to do. Well, you could presume so. They're actually doing something. So maybe the problem's at that end, not this end. So this appears to be functioning. Well, this just gets a bit more interesting because this is very simple, just a bunch of LEDs across the uh, terminals with some commons, so common to the shielding. Maybe the cables aren't shielded right through. Looks like it could be reliant on that shield in order to work. I think that might be the case there. Yep, there's a common up that side. So yeah, they're all common together based on the, sh the, the shield of the HDMI. Now, okay, let's just try that, shall we? Maybe it is the cable. Maybe I'm looking for something which isn't actually there. Uh -huh. There's no short connection. You would expect there to be, wouldn't you, on a decent cable? That could be what's wrong. Okay, I've got a way of detecting whether this is a problem or not. If I chuck the shields together, like that, turn the thing on, that is on. And if I then shove this in. Hmm, let's see, milliamps. So it's passing a current. Let's see if it starts working. Oh look, it does. Oh, maybe you can't see there, but there we go. Flip those around. Hopefully. Can you see them both? There you go. Has some missing wires, it looks like, but that does work. Just it doesn't have a connected shield. <laughs> Great quality cable, then. That right. So as you can see, I've got a different cable this time. This cable is working. So obviously the shields on this cable are connected up. Just the shields on this one aren't. Hmm. So why would they make a cable? without shields on it when it's such an important thing to have on video cables. I wonder. Now Dave had an issue recently with a 4K monitor in his uh, editing lab where when he stood up from his chair his monitor would cut out like an induced static electricity charge which is causing electronics to fail somehow. And I wonder if maybe his HDMI cables aren't shielded because you'd assume they are shielded. I've always assumed they're shielded because, you know, why not? They, they have a shield in them. It should be connected. So maybe that's the issue, is that these HDMI cables aren't actually shielded properly. Well, that's something worth looking at, Dave, if you happen to watch this video. Check it out. Just check the contingency on the cable, make sure the shield's connected up. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you found it interesting. And Yes, I did swap my leads back around to the right places on here, so I don't short it out next time. Good show.